Hey, well, I'm Steve Wheeler. I'm Associate Professor of Learning Technologies at Plymouth University, and I'm in the Institute of Education there. Educational technology and me go back nearly 40 years. I, I started work in 1976 when ed tech, as, as we kind of call it um, in a friendly way, was very much in its infancy. Uh, technology had been around for a while, but the idea about applying things like video and computing to education was quite a new thing. And I saw, I suppose, the birth of things like video cassette um, tapes. At the time we were using the old open reel uh, videos and, and um, people don't realize that, but then along came videotapes and then, of course, along came the digitized versions of those. So uh, we also built some of the first um, computers that were used for education as well from kit form. So I guess I was in it in right at the start. And even then I could see the potential for transformation, for, for um, enriching and extending and, and enhancing learning, I suppose. And uh, it's been quite a long haul, but I, I guess only in the last 10 years have I seen some really amazing things, and I'm now talking about things like social media and mobile technologies. Those, for me, have been the real game changers. I think it's always dangerous to say that a particular technology or, or, or a set of technologies will change education, but I think that in this case, um, when you think about what mobile technology can do, it can actually allow you to move anywhere in the world. So provided you're connected, you can um, you can uh, create content, you can share content, you can access content, and you can also connect with other people. Now, those, to me, are the most amazing things that you should be able to do with technology. And with social media on board, that, that actually makes that possible. So mobile phones and social media together are a really heady mix. They're a really powerful combination of tools. Having said that, I think other things will come along, which will drag that even farther into into the realm of, of transformation. I think that other technologies will, will emerge, which we can't even consider yet. We can't even conceive of them yet. And, and that's the exciting thing about being involved in educational technology. You never really know what's coming next. The problem with some technologies, especially things like learning management systems and maybe some of the, some of the, um, the classroom technologies, is that they are very, very complex in terms of the way they look and the way they feel. So, um, for instance, I remember with the old interactive whiteboards, you had to calibrate them first before you could actually start to use them. Otherwise, your writing would be out of sync with the writing that appeared on the screen. So you had to go through this process of calibration. It was quite laborious and took time, and it also took a lot of skill. Um, the same thing with learning management systems. Uh, clearly, they, they are designed with engineers in mind rather than with learners in mind and so therefore you have to spend so much time navigating around clicking this and, and clicking that to try and find your way through to the learning. You spend more time fiddling with the technology and learning how to use it than you do actually learning itself and for me that's the wrong way around. For me technology should be simple to use so one touch, one tap or even one wave of the hand or a blink of the eye in the case of Google Glass and hopefully that will get you into the learning itself. For me, it's not about the technology. The learning is more important. This is why I say if we're going to use technology at all, it has to be transparent. And eventually, hopefully, it will just dis disappear altogether into the background. And we won't even think about it anymore. We'll think only about the learning. Teachers haven't got a lot of time to spend learning about new technologies. So therefore, technologies that are going to be successful will be simple ones, ones that don't take a lot of time to use. And not only that, they have to be um, able to be applied to help support new pedagogies and new ways of teaching and learning too. That's the real trick. That's the real connection that all teachers have to make with new technology. You, you need to start thinking about what kind of structures you need to impose upon schools to get the maximum uh, and optimised learning out of it. And one way of doing that is, 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 I think, to do away with regimentation and uniformity. One size clearly does not fit all. I think every child is different, every student is different, every student has different um, preferences and different approaches, and every student has different aspirations as well. So, so school, for me, needs to change. Um, ultimately, school is about shaping us for the future, but it's also about life now. I said this earlier on, school is not just preparation for life, school is life itself. 
And if we get it right there, it's going to get right later on. If we get it wrong there, then you're going to see problems, huge problems later on in life. I, I think clearly subjects are there, but there are, there, are, there are new ways of teaching them, which I think are emerging. So, so for instance, um, I see some schools breaking down the silos, the divides between subjects. So, for instance, um, there's a school that um, I write about in my book, uh, Learning With Ease, which has just been published, um, a, a school called Skipton School. It's a, a girls' engineering college in, um, in Yorkshire, in England. And interestingly there, they, they are delivering transcurricular subjects. So the subjects mix in with each other. So a group of students I interviewed, they were creating a synthesizer. They built the synthesizer themselves, a musical instrument with keyboard, and they had a, a waveform um, on the screen, and they were playing with different notes and different sounds using the electronics. And I said, what are you learning? They said, oh, we're learning physics and music. Wow, physics and music together? How can you do that? And they were, well, they explained it. You know, the, the, the waveforms, you change the waveform, it makes another sound, and then we can compose music from it and see how it all fits together and see how the notes work with each other and how the sounds work. And really, they were indeed looking at electronics, they were looking at physics, they were looking at engineering, but they were looking at music as well. And for me, that is the future of education. One of the young girls at the end, I said to her, why is it that it's, it's so important that you learn topics and subjects together combined. And she thought about it for a minute and she said, well, I guess it's because it helps me to understand the world better. And I thought, that's it. That is the secret to our success of the future of education. We have to combine the topics together. You don't go down to the supermarket and say, right, now I'm going to use maths. I'm going to now calculate how much I owe. Of course, that's in there, but you don't actually think I'm going to be a mathematician today. You are all those things. You are also an artist. You are also, you know, um, uh, somebody who, who who looks at the aesthetic qualities of things before you buy them. You are someone who who uh, is a historian because you have to think about what happened last week when you cooked that meal. Um, you have to think about where you are going with your geography. It all has to be in there somewhere. All of the subjects I think are equally important, but in the modern education system, some subjects are given too much. Wait, so maths and languages seem to be higher up than the arts for some reason, and I don't understand why that should be. So let's bring all the, the subjects together, let's teach them all together, and let the children choose the direction that they're going to go in, which will shape their future careers. So I think there needs to be a huge overhaul of the current education system. Do you know, I've got more negative... <laughs> experiences than positive ones, but because school for me wasn't really a good experience. Um, I was largely ignored or ridiculed or bullied because I wasn't that confident as a child. I was quite shy and, uh, and I, I met very few teachers that actually I felt understood me. And I think that's an important thing in education is that children should have teachers that at least try to understand them and try to accommodate them in some way. Um, for me, my best teacher ever, and I, and I write about this again in my book, was a guy called Larry, Larry Domain. We called him Larry, all the others we used to call Sir, but he, he allowed us to call him Larry. He was very progressive in his approach. He was a music teacher, and in them days, boys could only do art or music. They could not do both. The girls could do both, but the girls could only do one science. The boys had to do all three sciences. So it was a very gender-biased curriculum, and I have no idea why it sustained itself so long. When the national curriculum came in in the UK in 1988, that all changed and everyone could study everything. But at that point in my, in my educational career, I had a choice, art or music. Now, I was good at both, and I wanted to do both. But um, I had to choose art because that was the one that I was going to get my A-level in and then go on and do graphic design and photography, which was my career at the start of my, my, my working life. And so music had to take a back seat. But I contrived a way around this. Um, I realized on my timetable that PE, physical exercise, came at the same point as Larry's lessons in music. And so, for the last two years of my schooling, I never went to PE, and I always went to music. And I sat in the back of his class. I said to him, Larry, is it possible for me to sit in the back of your class and simply learn? He said, well, he said, you can do. He said, it won't, you won't be able to do any exams. 
He said, but you can certainly sit there and be my guest. And he kept it quiet and so did the PE guys because they knew, the PE teachers knew that I didn't, well, wasn't really interested in, in sport. Um, but I sat in the back and I learned so much from his music lessons, not just about music, but about performance, about presentation of self, about creativity, about a whole range of, of um, organisational issues like, like how, to, how to set up and run a concert, for instance, which I later did as a musician, or maybe how to, to manage a musical, a stage musical, you know, and how to act, how to project your ideas to, to an audience. And all of these things, of course, come back later on in life. These are literacies and skills which are now emerging again in my career as a, as a speaker and a presenter, and of course, as a teacher and a researcher. So nothing is ever wasted. And that was the most enjoyable time in my whole school career.